Okay. Um, this is uh, doing this video. This is a uh, Venturi's and the, and your idle gap. So let me explain about Venturi's. Uh, Venturi's uh, changes your airflow, um, meaning more air, less air. All right. You can see this is a. It's hard to see through this camera, but this is a nine. And this is a, a six. Okay. If you can see the difference in the holes. All right. This is bigger and smaller. Now, let's say I'm bashing. I'm going with a Nina Ross all day, a nine. Because I'm trying to get the most power out of the engine. The bigger the Venturi, the more power you're going to get out of the engine. Okay? Um, now, there's different Venturi uh, material, like these aluminum ones. Um, no Rossies. Um, and... <sighs> They're smoother. Um, now, uh, be honest with you, I've never seen a difference between aluminum or the plastic ones. Allegedly, I think the aluminum is supposed to dissipate heat uh, better. And the aluminum ones come with like the Mito line of engines and also the, the Rossi Virtus. And I think that other engine they have out, that new one they have out. Um, but I've used both and I've never seen a difference. Now, let's talk um, now. Okay, so. When would you use a smaller Venturi? All right. Now, <clears throat> smaller Venturis, um, you're going to get less air. So that means you got to lean the motor out more, okay, as far as your fuel. Because with the bigger Venturi, you have to add more fuel to the engine, okay? If you don't, you're going to be running lean. All right, you don't want to do that. Now, with a smaller Venturi, you got to lean the motor out some. That means take away some fuel, okay? Now, that, one, saves you gas mileage. Two, um, it gives you more bottom end. You'll get a lot more bottom end with a smaller Venturi, okay? Um, now, the reason why you want to save gas mileage and maybe get that little bit more bottom end, if you're in the race, like if you're bashing, you really don't care about gas mileage. You just want more performance, power, and rolling. But when you're racing, you want to make the most power you can make and save gas. The reason why you want to save gas is because if, say, you race and you number third, and you have a, let's say, a 30-minute main race, 30-minute race, you're going to need fuel. You have to come in and fuel up. The guy behind you, when you come in to, to fill up, the guy behind you pass. Now he's in third, and that's fine. So you get your fuel, you go, and you know you're doing your thing, doing your thing. Now eventually he has to pit. And get fuel so then you'll go past him the key to it is to pit less as much as possible with fuel so you try to push it as further you can all right now another thing with venturis is that the bigger the venturi the bigger your tuning window will be meaning um it's um you can be off an hour or two and still get great performance and still the motor still will be fine when you go to a smaller Venturi, your tuning window gets smaller, meaning uh, your adjustments get more tighter, get smaller. And that hour or two, uh, well, it's easier to make mistakes tuning with a smaller Venturi because the adjustments are so small. You can miss your mark very easy with a smaller Venturi, okay, than you can with a, a bigger one, all right? When I tune a motor... When I tune my motors, um, first thing I do is I check the idle gap. The idle gap is very important. I set my idle gap between um, 0.7 millimeters to 1 millimeter. Some people do 0.5 millimeters, and that's fine, you know, whatever. But I try to stick between 0.7 and 1 millimeter. 0.7 millimeter and 1 millimeter. Um, the way I do this, I take a regular old paper clip. You can use anything, piece of wire, anything, but just make sure you measure it. Um, and I'm gonna show you this. Hold on. Okay, zero out. All right. So if we measure this paper clip here, okay. This paper clip. I don't know if you can see it. Basically, one point oh two millimeter. That's small, don't think, but that's basically one millimeter. Okay. Now, what I do is I got an old off the motor here. It's an old off the motor. Uh, it's hard to understand the camera. Okay. 
you take your venturi out your insert out and i push the slide carb in and from there i come down against the wall of the base make sure i got this right make sure i come down against the wall of the base and i put it in there and make sure make sure you focus see that now i'm getting no resistance with that that means this idle is, is bigger than one millimeter okay see that so i mean we gotta <clears throat> excuse me i mean we gotta adjust that so you adjust with your idle screw here okay now your idle screw might be here it might be on the back side here but this is your idle screw okay now if we turn the idle screw clockwise meaning the direction of a clock that's going to make this gap bigger and bigger means your idle is going to be higher what we want to do with this one is lower the idle close that gap some so we got to turn counterclockwise okay so i'm gonna turn it uh, now when i do this i normally i pull my slide back that way it ain't rubbing against that screw and i keep my side slide back and i turn clockwise now, i'm gonna do about three hours there okay i did about three hours let's see how that go push my slide back in okay let's see if y'all can see that slide back in and i go in now i'm still a little bit too big because i'm not getting any resistance okay so i'm gonna go back do my slide turn some more counterclockwise okay I'm going to go another three hours. Boom. Okay. Let's see. Push that slide back in. And go down and down there again. Now I'm getting resistance. Okay. You can see that. You can see it's so hard. It's doing this through the camera. Okay. Getting resistance now. All right. But I'm not getting where I want. So I'm going to do a little bit more. for my slide. Now I'm going to do about... Let's say, let's do it on another three hours again. Maybe two and a half, something like that. Because we're close. Push my slide back. All right. Back in there. Oops. All right. Now, see there, I went too far. Because now, the paper clip won't even go in there. Okay? So now, I'm going to turn clockwise. Put my slide back clockwise. Let's do about an hour. Maybe an hour and a half. Slide back in. Boom. See that? Now I'm getting resistance. That's perfect. See that? Uh, get resistance. So that right there is probably 0.9 millimeter because I'm getting resistance on that. All right. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, if you have a new motor, your idle gap is probably set. But sometimes you might have to adjust your idle gap. Um, I had one motor that this low speed needle was seized up and I had to take it apart. I had to take the whole car apart, clean it all out. I had to put some anti seize on there and clean it. Then I had to reset the idle gap. And uh, sometimes you got to do that, you know. Now, once I have this set, um, I adjust my idle with my low speed needle from there. And I really, I rarely touch this again after that. But I make sure this is set first because if this is not set first, um, your idle, your tuning is going to be really hard to do. All right. So hope that helped. This is an old off the motor, man. Uh, um, 0.28. And, um, uh, actually, I actually modified this thing and it was fast. It was nice. It was quick. I, um, drilled this carburetor out to a nine millimeter. And, um, man, it was fast. Um, here's, here's the, uh, sleeve. I actually put some fangs in the intake. And, um. Put some fangs, yeah, fangs in the intake. I did some work on the um, on the crankshaft. The problem with this was is you know often it was cheap, cheap motor. So what happened is the heads was getting eaten up. One, I think, uh, the case cracked. It couldn't handle it. Uh, but it was making a lot more power. Man, it was rolling. But and I didn't care. It's a cheap off the motor. But you know, and I can probably get this back run. I just need a new head. Who knows? But all right. So, man, hopefully this helps somebody out. Hit me up. All right, later.